Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to break down my trip to WWE Raw 30, a show that took place just a couple of weeks ago and that I was live for. What's going on out there, world? It's your boy Tommy on the spot for Watch Along Wrestling. Hopefully everyone is doing well and staying safe. And if you know my channel, you know the importance that I put on wrestling vlogs on the channel. I always stress the importance of documenting your life, whether it be a family video, whether it be a vlog. I always like to be able to go back and relive these experiences through video, and that's what I do here on my channel. These wrestling trips for me are so important because a lot of times I'm usually going with a good friend or my wife, and we've even taken family trips and centered them around a wrestling show. So I really do. Vlogs are a huge part of this channel, and whenever it comes to a vlog, I always think it's kind of three parts to it, right? There's the I'm going to video, which talks about the experience of getting ready to go to a show, kind of a hype video for the vlog. Then there's the vlog proper, and then afterwards is kind of the experience video. And that's what this one's going to be. This video is the experience video for the 30th anniversary of WWE Monday Night Raw. And uh, I had a great time at that show. I'm going to get into kind of the ins and outs. And I did do an I'm going to video. So if you guys want the backstory there of the, Royal, of the uh, trip to Raw, where I talk about how initially I wanted to go to the Royal Rumble, what made me kind of pivot to Raw 30, uh, that video I'll put in the link uh, into the description below so you can take a look at that video. This video though is going to be more of a recap. I did go to Raw 30 with uh, my main man James, one of my good friends, and uh, it was a lot of fun. We had a, we had an absolute blast. It, it was uh, an experience of, of really a long time coming. Uh, you know, before I was married, uh, James was someone I went to a lot of shows with. Uh, he, he was one of my one of my best friends. Uh, he still is one of my best friends, but he was kind of my wrestling best friend. And we'd, sim we'd do a lot of similarly to kind of how my wife and I do it now. You know, James wasn't huge on wrestling. He was more of a casual fan. I was much more of a diehard fan. I wanted to go to the show. I'd say, hey, Royal Rumble's coming to Atlanta. Let's do it. We'd go down and he'd look and plan every other thing. That's how we'd kind of set our trip up. And then what I'd do is I'd go and uh, I I'd have like the one or two things that we wanted to do. Now, this particular trip, I didn't think James was going to come with. I, I had planned this trip out kind of as a solo trip as I'm getting ready to start a new job. And so I had a little bit of time to kill. I figured I need to go and do a big wrestling trip. Uh, initially, again, it was gonna be the Royal Rumble. Didn't go to the Rumble. And I will say that if you did go to the Rumble, I think you had a great time. The Rumble's a really a lot of fun. I think the, it's such a great live experience to do that 10, 9, 8 countdown live with like thousands of other people. Um, and I think being there this year in particular for the Sami Zayn uh, angle with Roman Reigns turning on Roman, hitting him with the chair, would have just been an incredible moment to experience live. So I think I would have enjoyed the show. But at the end, I have no regrets on pivoting here to the show here in Philly. Philly was easier for me to just do a kind of a one day show. And I was going to go alone. Uh, but James uh, had uh, been able to, he's been kind of helping me out with some of this Bell's Palsy deal I got going on. And when we got to chatting, he said, let's do it. Let's, let's do Philly together. And so we made a pact to go ahead and do that. And uh, we went about it. So one of the things uh, we've been going with James, and it kind of actually worked out for the best. One of the things that, excuse me, one of the things we had planned was going to the show. Initially, when I had set up this plan, my plan was actually to go out there the entire day. Get out there early as can be, 9 a.m., have a full day in Philly, maybe go see the Liberty Bell, go get breakfast, go do the Rocky Steps, have a full day out there to really build the anticipation to Monday Night Raw. And uh, to really kind of make it more of an event, you know, because you know me with my, my vlogs, one of the big things I always say is I want it to be as big of an experience as it can be. And for the sole reason that if I went to Philly and the show was horrible, and I didn't think the show was that bad, and I'll get to some of the ins and outs of the show in a sec, but I want there to be something that we can look back on and remember. I've been to bad shows in the past. Honestly, I, I thought when, when I went to, let's say for example, Royal Rumble 2019, not an amazing show. Good show, really good show, solid lineup, but an incredible experience because of everything else we did in Arizona. And by the time the Rumble came, it didn't matter if it hit or not because we had had so much fun. So I always try to do as much as I possibly can leading straight up into the show. So uh, with James coming, uh, he said, let's be a little, let's be a little more realistic. Uh, and I was glad he did. He said, we're not gonna go back home until really late from the Raw show. And we're not 22 anymore. So I think we should leave a little later. Uh, and that's what we planned to do. Cause we were gonna do this in one day. So we we're gonna go right after Raw, we we're gonna shoot back home. Uh, so I went, uh, we planned to leave around 12. Uh, when I went to go grab some, drop something off at my mother-in-law, I offered her a ride to the mall. So we got on the road probably at around one o'clock after I dropped my mother-in-law off. 
I then went and picked up James, just like old times, and we went down to go uh, figure out uh, where he was and picked him up. And away we went, and uh, we had a really nice journey going down to, to Philly. It was, uh, you know, one of my first ever wrestling road trips was back in 2009, going to United Champions with James uh, for his birthday in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we had such a great time. So it was very reminiscent of that. Uh, we did make one stop, and one of the cool things uh, we stopped for was Auntie Anne's. If you look in the vlog itself, there's a little clip of James exiting the uh, the kind of uh, waiting area or rest area that we stopped at in Jersey. He's got a little bag of Auntie Anne's there. I was excited for that because typically when I go to shows at the Barclays Center, which was actually coming up at the Barclays Center soon, uh, I usually will try to go down a little early, kind of scope out the land a little bit, and go get myself an Auntie Anne's, which is right across the street over in that Brooklyn Mall. So I always like to kind of take some of that in, and so that kind of was reminiscent of that and uh, kind of tradition, so to speak. So we had done that, and then one of the big things for me once we got into Philly was going to the show, and uh, I've I, I wanted to, for a long time, go see the Rocky stuff. This is the one thing in Philly I just never really did. Been to Philly a whole bunch, been there many, many times, just went for Extreme Rolls back in October, and every time we're about to go, my wife and I have the plan to hit those Rocky steps, and we never do. So James and I, we were like, we're going down there, we're gonna go see the Rocky steps, uh, and it was awesome. Uh, really, really cool. Not even a big Rocky fan, but the history that these steps had kind of bring, uh, kind of, you know, represent with such an iconic movie, such an iconic scene. They have a little statue they've created for Rocky. It's actually the Philadelphia Museum of Modern Art, I believe it is. So we were able to go there, go get a picture with the statue, go take some photos, go run up and down the steps, reenact the old Rocky pose. I wasn't too sure what the Rocky pose was, so if you look when I went and did it, I did the yes chant afterwards, uh, but it was. It was a lot of fun. We were able to go ahead and do that. And then uh, went into, it was actually, it was nice because we had gone early then, we kind of circled around to go in towards uh, where the Wells Fargo Center was. We got a look down there. If you look down, it was probably a couple of hours before showtime. We were just kind of trying to scope out where parking was, what we were gonna do, if there was a way to park outside of the venue somewhere, uh, because the last thing we wanted, knowing we had a two and a half hour journey home, was to get held up getting out of there for many, many hours. Uh, so what we did was we went and checked it out. I love that area in Philly. Philly's really cool for a lot of their sports towns. You've got the link right here, which is where the Eagles play. Then like right here is the Wells Fargo Center, where, you, where the events take place, where the Flyers play, where the 76ers play. They also, I believe, have lacrosse, I wanna say. And then they, uh, where the Philadelphia Phillies play, the other baseball stadium is literally, it's all right here, which I just love. Because here in New York City, we aren't even, none of our stuff's even in like the same boroughs. You've got, uh, our football stadiums are in New Jersey. You have our hockey and basketball stadium is in Madison Square Garden, which is in the city. You then have another hockey team, which plays out of Long Island. Then you have our baseball teams, which play in Queens and in the Bronx. So it's all over, it's scattered. So I love that Philly has everything right there. And it was, it was kind of a kind of a surreal moment for me. I knew that we were just a couple days away from the NFC Championship game. Uh, I knew that it was gonna be being played at uh, the, where the uh, Eagles were gonna play in Lincoln Financial Field. So it's kind of cool being there. Kind of like, wow, this is in, in a, less than a week, this place is gonna be just jam packed with tons of people. And here we are now jam packed with a bunch of wrestling fans. So it was really cool uh, to kind of take that piece of it in. And also, it was kind of crazy to me that Philly had gotten this show so closely after they just got Extreme Rules. And Extreme Rules was a huge pay-per-view for the re-debut of Bray Wyatt. And that was a sold out show. Everyone was nuts for that, going crazy. Uh, we again got tickets at the last second. I'll get to the tickets uh, in, a, in a minute. But what we ended up doing, uh, and, and then of course they're having WrestleMania next year. So they're very much right now, it seems like they're ground zero for all things WWE. They're kind of what Bar the Barclays Center was a few years back and then probably before that what the Staples Center was in LA a few years back and are, are now at a point where they're getting so much. And, and it makes sense. You know, you have such passionate fans. There was a buzz throughout the entire town for Raw 30. People were into this. This did not feel like, hey, we just had wrestling three months ago. This felt like we're really excited for this and we can't wait till next year for WrestleMania. And I thought that was really cool. It was cool to kind of be there for that. Once we had kind of gone in, kind of seen everything, and you always see the trucks kind of parked. All the trucks were parked like by Citizens Bank Park where the Phillies play. So you kind of saw those old WWE trucks and that always gets my blood going. That gets me a little excited. It's like, ah, oh, we're, we're here for a live show. And uh, we were really into that. So following that, we went and uh, went to go grab some food. Always a big part of it is trying to try a new restaurant. We found this place called Kura Sushi. 
Kira Sushi ends up being a chain, didn't know this. Uh, didn't know it until my cousin, who lives in California, saw that we went to the show. Uh, saw that we were at Kira Sushi and said, are you in LA? And then I said, no, we're in Philly. He said, oh my gosh, that's my favorite restaurant. I didn't know they had one in Philly. And yeah, it's incredible. If you've never been to Kira Sushi, it's uh, a rotating restaurant. So you've got, not the restaurant itself, but all the food are rotating around you. And you just take these small plates. Each one's $3.55. You get to try all these different types of food. We had tons of sushi. If you get to 15 plates, they give you a prize. We got to like 14 and then it stopped calculating our plates. So we were like, all right, I guess we're not getting the prize, um, which sucks. I did hear the prizes are kind of cool, like lanyards and, and small stuff that are like uh, Chotsky stuff that is cool. So, but I mean, a lot of fun. You saw it in the vlog. You had the robot coming around there, delivering us our drinks. That was really cool. And then we were still able to get in, I'd say, by 7.30. Uh, we, we were seated in our seats by 7.30, right kind of where we were. And now to get to the seating process. So as I was saying in the last video, before we went to the show, the I'm going to video, we did not have tickets for Raw 30. Going into Raw 30, we did not have tickets. And it was one of these things where uh, tickets were kind of available in the upper deck and in the weeks or so going into the show. And then they just sold out. I don't know if it was that Hulk Hogan was advertised. That's what I think it might have been. I don't know if Roman was advertised. I don't know what it was. But the second that everything, the, all of a sudden, just tickets were impossible to get. And those tickets that were $30, $40, $50 were now $190 bottom, bottom price on the secondary market. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm not paying $200 to go and sit behind the stage. Like, it's tough. And... For me, uh, I grew up with the mindset of if you're in the building, that's all that matters. Uh, that's how I was raised. You just gotta be in the building. I, that, I was never, hey, we got front row seats. Maybe once or twice we had really good seats. For the most part, we were nosebleed central. And if you look at my vlogs from like beginning of 2019, almost every one of the places we sat, nosebleed central. Then in 2019, uh, I did. I got, I, you know, hit a point in my career where I was doing well. And so I told my wife three things. I said, you know, we, we, she was pregnant with our first one. I said, I'll take you for a baby moon. I'll buy you a uh, kind of bedroom set. And then from this point forward, we won't go sit in any more of the, the cheap receipts for WWE. And, and I didn't know how excited she was about it because I guess for her, she likes to sit close. Uh, but for this one, I knew, okay, tickets are already gonna be expensive. And I knew my friend James wouldn't care. He's kind of the same mindset as me. Just being there is what it's about. I don't think he would have really cared of where we were sitting. So it's just about at this point trying to get tickets. One thing that's great about the Wells Fargo Center, they always are reloading tickets on their website. They do it directly. They handle all the tickets so they get your information so that they can call you and get a little bit of uh, kind of do surveys, different things like that. But what was really interesting and nice about it was we did, uh, they did start uploading tickets and it was insane. Like they, they upload more tickets and they were gone instantly, like in two seconds gone. So I just kept readjusting, readjusting. Finally, I added some tickets to my cart and then my phone didn't work or something or you couldn't get to the checkout section of it so I was freaking out and then thankfully they reloaded some tickets and we were able to get two tickets $30 each 45 after fees it was way up on top right to the side of the stage so you couldn't see the entrances which I know a lot of people love so and I the idea of being able to go to a live raw this would have been I think my first live raw which is crazy yeah I think it was my first live ribbon to Smackdown but I think maybe my first live raw since they changed things over and they have that long big screen so i think seeing that live would have been really cool um but we didn't get a chance to and you know what it ended up saving us a lot of money on it i was happy to go and uh be able to save money on that and then at the end of the day still get to be there for the show and not pay an astronomical amount of money to sit you know probably with full view of the stage would still up top and pay like 300 dollars each for that because tickets were they were the view this was the hottest ticket to get I got to the arena around 7, 7.30 and people were going nuts. And I didn't know what was going on. And then I realized it was because they had some exclusive merchandise. And this was insane. <laughs> I mean, you had, they had 30 different Raw's 30 commemorative belts. Uh, so they were the, the, the real belts. Uh, you, you got your winged eagle, your big eagle, and you also had your spinner belt done up for Raw. 30 were put out, each one for $750, and people were going insane for them. They were doing everything it took to get these belts as quick as they possibly could. And I thought it was insane until the next day I went online and like all these belts went for like $1,500 to $2,000. So I guess there's a major market for this that I just was not aware of. I probably at the same time would not drop $750 down on these types of belts. They also had mini belts. 
Uh, and they had shirts, and that's what I got. I, you know, I'm a little bit old school. I uh, restarted uh, my collection, so to speak, or my tradition, long-standing tradition, of getting a shirt every live show I go to. So this is what I got here. Look at that. So you got... Look at that. So you got your Raw is 30 shirt here. And what's interesting about this, they put this before the show and Brock is front and center. So every other person who's on this shirt was advertised to be there except for Brock Lesnar. So I thought that was really interesting. On the back, it does have the I was there. Now for those who don't know the history of me and shirts, I used to get a shirt every single show I'd go to for many, many years. Uh, if there was a shirt available, if it was commemorative of that show, I'd get it and you'd go. And typically you'd have Something similar to this, you normally would have like your big matches promoted. This is more of like a celebration shirt. So you got Bobby Lashley, Ric Flair, Becky Lynch, Hulk Hogan, Undertaker, Roman Reigns, Rock Lesnar, Becky, uh, Bianca Belair, Shawn Michaels, uh, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, and Seth Rollins. Um, there's not like a, there wasn't like a promoted match. There was, but they weren't going to put that on the shirt itself. And then on the back, if you go to a shirt, it would typically say something like the city or it would say uh, you'd have like your match card. They made a major change from that a few years back and switched from the match card to the I was there. I didn't love the I was there for really, so for a while I don't have, like I don't have shirt from WrestleMania 35. I didn't have one from the Rumble 19. I did, in later years I've gone back, I've gotten a few of those, but I haven't, I still don't have one from WrestleMania 35 and it's because the I was there. I thought the I was there is weird. It's bizarre. It's just like, why do you want that? And then I put up a video about it around Survivor Series 2021. That's when I kind of restarted my, all right, I'm, I don't want to not have something for each one of the shows. And they don't have, if they had like a picture frame available, I'd buy them at each one. But they didn't have anything specifically available for the shows. So I ended up going and uh, somebody put up a comment there saying, hey, I love to say to buy the I was there because I don't get to go to that many shows. And I like to remember that I was there and it's kind of a cool deal. And so I was like, you know what? I am, I'm on unnecessarily tough on it and uh, I want something to commemorate it. I'm not going to buy a $750 belt. So at the end of the day, I'll take my $40 t-shirt and uh, I think it was 35 or 40, I'm going to say 40. And uh, away we went. And these were all sold out too. By the end of the show, these were gone. So everyone wants their commemorative stuff. Everyone wants uh, what they can get their hands on to be able to put these things online or to just have them for themselves or whatever it is. I was happy to get that shirt. And away we went in. We went in, we were there in time for main event. We'd eaten so much sushi, we were completely full at this stage, but we ended up getting a couple of drinks. Uh, James was having a good time. We, I went downstairs, James chatting it up with one of the bartenders there who was talking to him about how excited the city of Philly is for all these wrestling shows, talking to him about how they actually work by commission. So on those days when they know the $750 belts are coming in and people buy so many belts, people actually try to work at the Wells Fargo Center to go kind of in line with the wrestling shows, which I thought was really interesting. Um, and yeah, so he was talking with her about, you know, kind of how he was having all these drinks and she was telling us about the different drinks they had available. So we had a couple of drinks, uh, had a good time with that. I think James thoroughly enjoyed the show once he got a couple of drinks in him. Uh, but it was, it was really cool. Now, one of the things that's always been kind of odd about uh, TV tapings that I've never loved is the idea that when you're going to a TV taping, obviously there are commercial breaks. So when there are commercial breaks, nothing they can really do other than uh, you just kind of sit in silence for a little bit, and it's kind of weird. Uh, so there's a lot of downtime during TV tapings. I thought that happened a little bit towards the end. But for the most part, I thought this was a really good show. Bloodline, incredible to be there for live for that. Roman's entrances at this stage with the music, with the entrance, with everything that comes with, with being Roman Reigns and the acknowledgement and all that, I think kind of gets to a point where... It's an incredible experience to be there live for it. Uh, you know, I remember when he had the new music, everyone hated it. That music's incredible to be there. They hit that first beat and it's like this. It, it goes through your system. Like, it's it's amazing. Uh, so, so being there for that was cool. A, a top moment for me is when they asked, if you still want Sami Zayn the Bloodline, throw up your wands. Of course, I threw up my one. But not only did I throw up my one, my main man James also put up his one. Great moment. We were all into that. Uh, trial of Sami Zayn, I know people say it went, ran long. I loved it. First hour of that show was awesome. Judgment Day and the Usos killed it. Great to see Sami kind of come in there. Not going to break down the whole show because we're a couple of weeks out at this stage. So I think everyone's already kind of seen that. But I will say this. The Legend segments, uh, the main two, right? Yeah, I think about, well, you got Hulk Hogan in the beginning. A lot of people love Hulk Hogan. I, 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 
I was stunned how many people were still cheering for Hulk Hogan. It's like as if nothing had gone. I don't know if it's just the real American music or if people just genuinely still love the Hulkster. People really into him. Uh, the DX segment, though, and I think the Undertaker segment, those were the two that were incredible to be there live for. And I love that this year, because Raw 25 wasn't like this, this year there was definitely an emphasis put on you have your legends, but they're there to amplify the current talent. Undertaker was there to amplify LA Knight and Bray Wyatt and really promote their match for the Royal Rumble. Because I think another one of the tough things with these anniversary shows is they take place right at the Go Home show for the Rumble. So you're kind of all over the place with the hype. You've got to hype the Rumble. You've got to have this show. There's so many different things going on that it really becomes a little disjointed, I think. But they did a good job with this year's. I really, I really liked it. I mean, yeah, you still had your silliness with the backstage skits. Um, but even those, I thought the IRS and it was cute. DX stuff. I missed the DX reunion at the Barclays Center. It was right after, ironically enough, uh, the Extreme Rules show, and I was trying to get back for it and never did. Still have not gone to that solo show. Maybe maybe when Raw is here next week, I'll, maybe I'll head there alone. Who knows? Um, but yeah, it was one of these things where seeing them again, I was like, oh, but I thought it was kind of cool. It was cute how they had Kurt Angle involved. And they also made Gunther and Imperium look super tough by having DX cower to them. And then they brought out Seth Rollins and the Street Profits that, you know, that was cool. They, they, didn't, they didn't lay anybody out, and they gave way for the new guys to come in and look great in the process, which I thought was great. And that's really the point of these legend shows. And then end of the end of the show, Brock Lesnar, big return, I thought was cool as well. So I thought overall, this was a really, really fun show. After the show, we did get out of there. It was probably, we got out of there quick, because we parked at Citizens Bank Park. Still the same $40 parking fee, maybe it was $35. I think that was $35. And, you know, you, so you still had a large parking fee, but the good news was by being across the street, we were able to get out, go directly across the street, get in our car, hit the road, and we were back on the road pretty quickly. Uh, we did make a stop over at Gino's Steaks. Uh, the, the, we wanted to get the cheese steak, wanted to get the full Philly experience. So we got that, and that's always fun because you had a bunch of wrestling fans there. Everyone was really amped up. Everyone had the wrestling shirts on all throughout the entire show, probably from the second we parked at Citizens Wing Park, throughout the whole night, and then afterwards at the steak, uh, cheesesteak place, you had everyone just doing the Phillies, the, the Eagles chant, E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles, all day long. It was, it was like, I'm not an Eagle fan by any stretch of the imagination, but I thought it was kind of cool to see everyone so excited, and you felt like you were a part of of something that is cool and now they're in the uh, super bowl so that's it's neat it's it's really a, it's it's a cool deal and uh I, I don't know that i'm rooting for them but i i hope that the city enjoys having the super bowl there uh so yeah we got our cheesesteaks everyone was out there people with the, with the belts everyone had their no one was wearing a coat except myself myself and james so, like everyone was out there and the, showing off pimping their wrestling shirts showing off their belts having a hell of a time and they were all talking about how excited they were for for wrestlemania and so it's uh Got to be fun to be a wrestling fan in Philly. We did get home at about 3.30 in the morning. A little bit late. Can't lie to you guys. That definitely was late. And I think it took a day or two to recover. Again, we're not 22 years old anymore. I don't know how many one-day events like that I have in me. But thanks to my wife for supporting my decision to do that. And I think this was also good because I think this will prohibit me from doing the trips alone. Because originally I was going to do San Antonio alone. And uh, I think after this, I don't think I'd be able to. I, I don't think I'd do a trip like this alone, to be honest. I think, honestly, not having James there with me would have been really tough. Um, would have been a really long, long day. And then being on the road for so long, at the end of the day, you want somebody there. I think, you know, just having a podcast wouldn't have been the same as, you know, the laughs and the memories that we shared coming on the way home. So, loved the show. Thought it was a really fun deal. Glad that we were able to make it. As I'm now preparing to start this new job, I just wanted to get on here and talk about that. But have no fear. As I said, this year, 2023, we're doing things different here on the channel. We got a ton of stuff coming up. I am going to do make it a concerted effort to continue to produce content on here and keep your eyes peeled for some new vlogs that are coming up here in uh, just a couple of weeks. Uh, that will be some of the vlogs that have never been seen. A uh, vlog from that aforementioned Extreme Rules show vlog from the Grand Slam show that TNA put on, uh, TNA, AEW put on. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And until next time, I will see you guys in the next video.